we'll start with singing this familiar Christmas song, Joy to the World. Let's sing it out. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. us to sing one more time joy to the world the lord has come and joy to the world the lord is come let her Shepherds, why this jubilee? 
while your joyous dreams prolong what the gladsome tidings be which inspire your heavenly song this morning and we thank him we give him praise this christmas season for the gift of his son we love you today lord we worship you even in these christmas songs our hearts are full of joy and full of praise today for the season that we get to celebrate the messiah the savior the good news that christ has been born we worship you today lord we give you thanks, God. We praise your name. As we continue to sing and express our hearts today through these songs, I know we don't sing them all year round, but just let them minister today, even if you don't know all the words. This Christmas offering song, I bring an offering of worship to my King. Can we sing it out? the skies of Bethlehem appeared a star while angels sang to lowly shepherds three wise men seeking truth travel from afar hoping to find the child from heaven and falling on their knees, they bowed before the humble Prince of Peace. I bring an offering of worship to my King. No one on earth 
deserves the praises that I sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Oh, Lord, I bring an offering to you. Sing it again. I bring an offering. And I bring an offering of worship to my King. No one on earth deserves the praises that I sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Oh, Lord, I bring an offering to you. The sun cannot compare to the glory of your love. There is no shadow in your presence. No mortal man would dare to stand before your throne, before the Holy One of Heaven. And it's only by your blood, and it's only through your mercy, Lord, I come. I bring an offering of worship to my King. Yes, Lord. No one on earth deserves the praises that I sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. worship to my king no one on earth deserves the praises that i sing jesus may you receive the honor that you're due oh lord i bring an offering local church should be easy and hassle-free, even when you're not at service. No cash, no checkbook, no problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. Using our free smartphone app, you can give to your church whether you're in service, on vacation, sick at home, or any other place in the world. Simply download the app, enter your credit card or checking account information, enter the amount, Set where you want to give and click Give. You'll receive an email confirmation of your gift. You're done and set up for the next donation. With Tithely, you can give recurring gifts or give one time. Wallet free, super fast, secure. Download the app now from the App Store for iOS or Android. Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Whom angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keeping? This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and Gold and myrrh, 
birth of the Savior uh, makes a way for us to experience relationship with God once more, to have eternal life. What good news, what good news we celebrate at Christmas. We thank the Lord today. Uh, today we're going to jump back into, again, our Christmas theme that we just want for Christmas this year to give more of Jesus, to receive him to, in our hearts and in our lives and to be able to share the good news of Christmas and the good news of Christ's birth with those around us. A couple of weeks ago when we first looked at this theme, we read the Christmas story of Luke chapter 1 and how God is the God of the impossible. When we slow down everything we know about Chris, the Christmas story and from our scripture reading, how Mary, a young virgin, is announced by the angel to be bearing the child that the Holy Spirit would come upon her and that she would give birth to a son. How God is not limited by our limitations and oftentimes when he may ask us to do things or prompt us to do things that we feel are impossible maybe not to the virgin birth level but maybe there are times when God prompts us and nudges us in a direction and we hesitate and we say God I don't know if I'm the right person for that job I don't know if you've picked the right person there are other people better suited to do that God's not limited by our excuses and by the things that we are limited by this week, this week we want to talk a little bit differently and this is a, a beautiful sermon that I hope inspires us today about the meaning, the true meaning of Christmas and why it, it should be so important to us. Christmas presents, and no that's not a typo, that's not something I didn't check the spelling of. We're not talking about presents like these that we wrap and that we hunt in the stores and spend money on to wrap and give to those we love, but the presents of sharing relationship with each other. This is what really Christmas is about. And so if you have your Bibles or your apps and you want to join me in Matthew chapter 1, again, a very familiar passage in Christmas season that's read and reflected on in many churches. But let's just slow it down this morning and really take time to consider what's going on as we read it together. Starting at Verse 18, Matthew 1, it says that this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now Joseph, her fiancé, was a good man. And he did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, verse 20, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The child that is within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will have a son and you are to name him Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child and she will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded. He took Mary to be his wife but he didn't have sexual relations with her until he, her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. I don't know if you've ever had conversation with someone. You've <laughs> visited with someone or had coffee and spent time with them. And your sense is that they're not really there. I don't know. Now some wives might look at their husbands and think, yeah, I know that feeling all too well. <laughs> they're physically present, but they're... They're somewhere else, you know what I mean? So we know that in order for relationships to grow and to be healthy, it requires both parties being 
present and engaged, notwithstanding those few moments that happen from time to time. And spiritually speaking, we can take that exact same premise and apply it to faith. In order for our relationship with God to grow and to be healthy, it requires a connection with God where we are both present. In the Christmas story, God is making his presence known to mankind. This is what's so incredible about what we're reading. Although we take it for granted because we've heard it many times. The story of God's miraculous intervention with mankind through the person of Jesus begins with two very ordinary people. We talked again two weeks ago about how God uses unexpected people. Two young people engaged to be married. We talked about Mary and how God was blessing her. She was favored to be among all women, to carry the Savior, to give birth and bring him into the world. But let's talk for a minute about Joseph, whom we read about today. And Joseph is just an average guy. He's a working class young adult living in a very small town. We talked about Nazareth, how inconsequential it was. It's not even mentioned in the Old Testament. And he's engaged to be married, right? Young love. We can all think back years ago to when we first meet the person that we promise our love to and we look forward to spending the rest of our lives together. And this is Joseph and Mary, whom we read about in the Christmas story. But all of a sudden, things take a turn for the very unexpected. Because Mary informs him that she's expecting a baby. And he is 100% certain that it is not his. Alright, let's put ourselves in the moment. We don't know what that conversation looks like. It's not recorded for us in scripture. But we can imagine there are a number of questions that arise if you're Joseph in this scenario. And so while he's still trying to figure out and make sense out of this very surprising situation, he has an encounter with an angel. And the angel informs him, listen, this is what God's plan is. The baby will be born. It's been miraculously conceived by the Holy Spirit. And this child, which your fiancé is going to give birth to, will save people from their sins. Pretty lofty statement. When Joseph hears it and this dream that he has and this divine encounter, I'm sure it makes almost as much sense as everything else that Mary has already informed him. So not only is this virgin fiancé that he has going to give birth to a child that has been miraculously conceived by the Holy Spirit, but this child will be the savior of the world. What do you even do with that? What does it even mean? It's beyond anything that Joseph could have possibly made sense of rationally, or any of us really, when we think about how incredible this moment is unfolding in human history. Oh, and one last thing, the angel says. The prophet Isaiah spoke this hundreds of years before, but that child that you are now going to raise as your own, this little baby that you will nurture and care for, that will grow up to be a boy and a teenager and then a man, he will be the very embodiment of God himself, Emmanuel. You will have the very person of God under your care. It's incredible, right? It's, it's unimaginable. Joseph and Mary, like, you want to talk about asking someone a big ask. Can you take care of my child for the weekend? Sometimes that's a pretty big ask, right? If, especially if your child is a little bit of a handful. You might say, well, I'm asking you a big deal here. Can you just watch them for a few hours or for a couple of nights? The angel says, I'm going to bless you. You're going to be blessed with the Son of God, God himself, and you are going to take care of him and nurture him and watch him grow and mature. And not just the virgin birth, not just the manger, not just the wise men, but Jesus, his whole life, his ministry upon earth, the accusations that would later come upon him, 
and the ridicule and all of the mockery that would happen to the very Son of God which would ultimately lead him to a gruesome death on the cross. God with us, Emmanuel. This is the life that you are now going to live out. Christmas is a miraculous story for so many reasons because on the backdrop of the nativity scene which we imagine in our minds and which we so dearly love, what's going on is really both mind and, and earth shattering. It's beyond explanation. The God of the universe, the almighty, the creator, the all-powerful, the all-knowing one comes into human existence in the form of an innocent, helpless baby. His eternal presence, God, becomes present in our lives in the person of Jesus. God's presence, and again I'm using the same word in two different forms here that you can follow me in, becomes present in Jesus. Now you might have heard the statement around Christmas, and I've already mentioned it about you know, Christmas, the true meaning and the true, the, the true heart of Christmas is not just about presents. It's not about getting gifts. And as much as kids get excited about getting things, and we might as adults get excited to unwrap a gift and have something given to us that's meaningful or unexpected. The real meaning of Christmas, the true heart of it, is appreciating those in our lives that we love, that we hold dear to us. The opportunity to, to celebrate and spend time with with those closest to us. The older we get, as I speak now from experience, the more we come to appreciate how true that really is. And we, Nita and I, as we spent time with those in the Magnolia this past week, you could see it in their eyes and their hearts as we spoke a little bit like this. And I asked them if they held special memories around Christmas with those that they love, and they certainly do, all of us do. Maybe you're here and you have elderly parents whom you're not sure how many more Christmases you'll get to spend time together with. I'm not meaning to put a damper on the mood this morning, but that's just reality for some people here today. Maybe you're a grandparent, you're a parent with little ones at home, and just that moment of excitement and true joy on Christmas morning, seeing them get up and they can't wait to, to get into their presence and... It just excites your heart to be able to see them and spend that time together. That's the real gift of Christmas. It's the presence of those we love. And that is exactly how God intends our relationship to be with Him. We often, and even if we are people of faith for a long time, take for granted how close and intimate God truly wants to be with us. We still picture him as being so far off. The God of the universe. What would he possibly want in terms of sitting and getting to know who I am? And nothing could actually be further from the truth. God values the relationship with you and I in such a special way that he sent his greatest gift to you and I. It's not just about Christmas, it's about life and eternity. That he would give the present of Jesus, his only begotten son, so that we could experience relationship and connection again with him. Christmas, as a result of Christmas, we can know God because when we take the words of the prophet as the angel proclaims to Joseph, Emmanuel, God with us, has been born. It might have happened 2,000 years ago, and it's not something that we can travel to today to the manger to see him. But one day, one day we're promised that we will spend eternity with him, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. The good news of Christmas is worth sharing with those that we know and those that we love. And it's worth us considering too in our lives of faith as we journey these next few weeks leading up to Christmas morning to be thankful for God and for all that He's done, the great lengths that He went through 
to connect with you and I, to restore that broken relationship because of sin. Why don't we take a moment today and I'll invite the guys back with me. We want to sing another couple of songs this morning and celebrate and give a chance to again express our worship to God. But take a moment this morning and just quiet our hearts together as we thank God for this, this day, this season, this reading this morning. Father, we pause, we praise your name today, we give you thanks and we're humbled as we consider today what we've read and what you've reminded us of through your word that the gift of Jesus was more than just a plan unfolding to offer salvation but it was your step of closeness towards us to be able to come into our lives and that we could experience relationship once again with you to be able to enjoy your presence and while on earth we get glimpses of it as we draw close to you through the day but God one day in eternity we will live forever in your presence and what a glorious hope that is because of Jesus we give you thanks today as we look forward to this season and for many of us the opportunity to spend time with those that we care about and those we love we pray that this Christmas season our lives and our testimony of faith will be an inspiration to someone that they will see Jesus through us and in us that they will be drawn to this message the Christmas miracle of the Savior of the world Jesus Emmanuel God with us
Come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Praise the Lord. Oh, come, all ye faithful. Yeah. 